Good morning. I am just getting into stitching today. Seems like a really good time for me to hop on and say hi to everybody. Hey, Jerry and Peroska. This must be prime stitching time for you guys, too. <laughs> hi, Celia. It's a little overcast. Okay, it's not a little. It's completely 100% overcast today which is a little challenging. Hi, Alicia. Look, I didn't even have to give you a heads up, Alicia. Hi, Janelle. And, ooh, there's every, lots of people. All right. Okay, is it Missy? Do we say the E at the end? I don't know how to read Denmark names. It's spitting rain. Okay, well, the ground is wet, so it has, I think it's kind of sprinkling, but not, not pouring rain. You're in a conference? Okay. I'm working down in here. Although the color that I'm filling in is going to go throughout all of this section, so. You say the E at the end, so Missy, okay. Happened to have been browsing YouTube and my notification came up. Well, that works. Um, I hope I'm stitching her as well. I'm kind of, yes I am, okay. So it's Black Friday. Oh, how was my Thanksgiving? You know, I have complicated feelings about Thanksgiving. Um, it was okay. I think overall it was good. I can see that. I spent much of it alone. Um, partially by choice and I don't know I was thinking at the end of the day how I really just wanted it to be a normal day <laughs> like kind of like my every day that I know and love and like I feel good about but That's not a very overwhelmingly positive day. It wasn't terrible. It just is not, I don't know. <laughs> yes, stitches. Good afternoon from the UK. Hi. And Sonia, hi. Good morning. If you guys were celebrating Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. then I hope it was good. Mm -hmm. You had a couple Thanksgiving with that. I think I just have a lot of um there was one point in which I started getting feeling very angry. Um not because of anything that was currently happening, but just um, because of past Thanksgivings. Past uh, Holidays in general, <laughs> um, like I love holidays, but they have not, they're not often what it is that I wish them to be. Good morning, stitching in Dairyland. But I, um, uh, 
I stitched in the morning. I was stitching on my bookshelf through like, like the pre Macy's Day Parade and then halfway through. And then I had made dough for rolls the night before, but I needed to like finalize them and get them on their second rise. So I did that during the second part of the Macy's Day Parade. And that was nice. It was nice to have some of that downtime. I discovered another kind of game that stresses me out and gives me anxiety to play. <laughs> oh man, I um, game. I don't. I'm not a very competitive person, so games are. I, I don't know. Sometimes it depends. Um, there's one game that's kind of. It's all about lying, and I. I when I played that one, I believe I was, it was not a good fit for me. But this one yesterday, it had to do with um, bidding, like you had to bid on being the person who got to go in the dungeon and fight the monsters. And, and that bidding and, and betting process was just highly stressful for me. <sighs> New start for Janelle. Spirit of Autumn. Oh, you're here from Australia. Australia is a hard time zone because there's like a lot of you guys. <laughs> there's a lot of time zones <laughs> and it gets late. Um, a little cross stitching and a little quilting for Sonia. You're just glad it's not snow. Well, I'm sure that's coming for you if it had, well, I assume you already have since I know a lot of Canadians already have gotten snow. I'm too far south to really get any snow this early in the year. I might get some in like January or February. Snowing instead of rain for getting a Christmas tree. Yeah, that would be nice. I have a fake tree. I got it when a couple years after my kitties came into my house. They are now 14. And they never tried to climb the tree, but they would drink the water from the tree. Anyway, it was more of a hassle. And so I got a fake tree. I still have the fake tree. It is halfway strong with lights because, because I couldn't finish. I don't really know. The lights are half strong. And my daughter won't be back until Sunday night, so I have until then. And then we can put ornaments up.
You have a fake one in your basement. You have more than, you're going to have more than one tree. Oh, I only have one tree. I want one, a little one, like a, maybe a really skinny one, but still like a decently tall one in my bedroom because I spend a lot of time up here. That's where I am right now. Um, it's a big room and it's got like this alcove area that I put curtains up. So it's kind of closed off. That's where I stitch. Bedrooms in the other part. The tree in this section would be really nice. I bet you there's a deal today on for Black Friday, right? Maybe I should go look. <laughs> It's down there for the years or two weeks, even cook if they're real one. I think, I think the sap is what gets me, like putting lights on, but having all the sap all over my fingers. I don't like that feeling. I like the smell of real trees though. So I have these essential oil, um, not diffusers, but like, mm -hmm. They're ornaments that you can put pine essential oil on it and then hang it on the tree. I do that. And periodically refresh the oils on them. I mean, I refresh them if I can find where the ornaments are on my tree. Because. Okay, but where we put the ornaments, you kind of like there's four of them and we spread them out on the tree so that the smell is like around, <laughs> but then we can't remember anything about where we put them. <laughs> it's like hunt, hunt for them so we can put the essential oil back on it. You decided not to fight with the cats and will not put up a tree this year. I saw a meme where somebody did like a half tree and then like attached it to the ceiling so the cats couldn't get to it. <laughs> uh, it was so funny. I mean, it looked super ugly, but it was really funny. My dogs are more troublesome than my cats are about the tree. mostly but the dog like none of them bother the tree but the dogs play and they don't have very good body awareness and they will slam into the tree when they're playing We should make a list of all of the cross-stitch companies that are having sales right now so that we can all go and spend more money. I don't know. the antiques I like those trees they make them you know the they're not even plastic versions but the breakable kind that I don't know what it's made out of but it's it's breakable but it's not ceramic it's like super thin and cheap looking and cheap feeling <laughs> so antiques the way to go Alicia hate is having a sale um it's kind of hard because we've got today's black friday tomorrow is small business saturday next week is cyber monday but everybody just kind of all does all the things they're not really separated anymore 
You do not need, okay, but Alicia, this section's for you. You like to say all the sales, so I'm just helping you out. So, Hade, I heard that Golden Kite um, has like a 10% off this week. Is it cheaper to kit up a Hade? Um, Maybe it's possible, Sonia. I, um, I've only bought one Haid kit, and I, I'm not gonna do it again, per, just because I don't need to. They come on um, here. I can show you. They come on cards like this, with these rings and the symbols and then like all of the floss this is this is all the floss of for my treasure home bookshelf that's not that didn't fit when i made my master set <laughs> so you can see that a lot of these have already been transferred but um so it's nice if this is the way that you like to stitch off of rings like this which is not very easy for a super size max color. Well, super size doesn't matter, but max color. It's just so many like rings and cards. <laughs> so that I think is the benefit of getting a Hade kit is if, if these cards are nice and they're nice and laminated, um, I think that's one of the benefits of getting them. Or like if you just don't have the brain power. So that didn't really answer your question, but maybe that gave you a little bit more information. Um, so Golden Kite, where the Rivendell pattern is. I heard that that's got a 10% off this week. Contemporary Cross, which is a very new company, a full coverage um, charting company. They are doing a Black Friday. Sale can't remember how much it is right now. Satsuma Street, I saw a sale. Good morning, Angie. This cord is there. We go. You use the Black Friday ten percent and the three check. Nice. Yeah, because those charts are not. Inexpensive. Were the did you get the two cheapest charts or did you um, did you get ones that you liked? Yeah, okay, Pip. Yeah, okay. Go lay down. I try not to pay attention to sales. Good 
Good morning. You actually really like those scenes too. They're just super pixely. I don't even remember what I got. I, I feel like one of them was a autumn scene and one was a cat at the time. Modern folk embroidery, um, Jacob, he just announced his 2023 stitch along, which is not a mystery stitch. So you can see like the whole picture. Um, I kind of like it. I don't like, I would choose different colors than, than he did. but he gives like some options and stuff. I don't know. I don't need another thing to stitch on next June, but I haven't stitched one of his yet and I like this one. So it actually makes me think of Narnia. Yeah, I haven't started Christmas shopping either. And Kaylin's birthday is before Christmas. So I haven't done anything about that either. She's at that age where she wants to be picking out her own things, but I also don't want to get her give to her because I don't want to limit her to that. We'll see. <laughs> you like to get done early? Normally I do too. It's just I haven't. I haven't done a thing. And among my siblings, we do um, like secret pals. We've done that since we were little. Um, like we we pick at random. I actually use Elster, so um, everyone has one other sibling to purchase for, and I have a sibling who is uncommunicative to us right now. So she's going to be hard to shop for because I have zero idea what to get to her. And I think I'm going to shop for whoever she has just to make sure that they get their secret pal present and don't get left out. Because I just, I don't know if she's going to do anything or not, this sibling of mine. So I really need to do that. I should do that today. Kaylin's is the 12th. So yeah. I <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to have them so close together because you're like, here's all your presents at once. And kids like their interests can change or what they're into can be so different in just a few short months and yeah so if all the presents are focused on what they like right now <laughs> it, my so my brothers um i one of them i have two brothers one's birthday is december 8th the other is january 8th so growing up we always put the tree up december 9th right after my brother's birthday and it came down on like January 7th 
the day before my other brother's birthday. So it was kind of sandwiched in it and it just gave us all this marking of this is when Christmas stuff goes up and this is when it comes down. And that made the birthdays be able to be the birthdays. Sonia, yeah, that's how it is with my siblings. Like we we kind of just we kind of do it by family. So you can you get the choice whether you buy for a whole family or just by the adults or the sibling directly. Not all of my siblings are married. Or well, all my married ones have kids, but not all of them are married. Two of them are not married. Wow, we've got a lot of December birthdays that we're working with going on here. My niece's birthday is Christmas Eve. Her parents do a really good job making sure that she has her birthday. Um, and that it's separate from Christmas. Alicia, that was my family growing up. Between Thanksgiving and the end of March, we had a holiday or a birthday, mostly every two weeks, sometimes one week. It's, it's great. I have six siblings. I am the third out of seven kids in my family. My birthday is end of February, which I really like because um, it's kind of like that time frame where you are tired of winter. You're tired of the cold. Um, but there's still something to look forward to. And then once my birthday's over, spring is right around the corner, so. I do like that. And there's always Chinese New Year in there too. New year this year, or next year. It's only November and I'm still thinking. I'm thinking in terms of next year. I keep seeing November dates and I'm like, but it's December. It's really not December, guys. It's November. But in my head, I think it's December already. You need all the sales to happen in the spring and summer months. Yeah, but you have to decide also in the spring and summer. You will see sales like Memorial Day which is May. I'm trying to think of what other sales are in the spring and summer months. Where do I fit into? Okay, so I have two older sisters and then there's me. And then a brother and two sisters and a brother again. The youngest brother, the very youngest, he's the one that lives with me. All my younger siblings have lived with me at some point. He's the last. Thank goodness. I really like that idea. To take them 
for a movie and dinner date by themselves, and then they get to go shopping for their own gift. This year, I told I told my daughter that I would tell her dance teachers what, that it was her birthday because she's got dance classes that day. <laughs> She's like, why would you tell them that? I'm like, so they can sing happy birthday to you. She hates this idea. But we're going to go on like a, a city scavenger hunt, I think is what it's called. I haven't. I was gifted tickets several years ago. Um, and haven't used them yet, but they still are valid. So we're going to go a couple days before her birthday um, with her dad. And then I think he wants to pay for her dinner. And then we'll probably go shopping another day. Um, because that's basically my gift is a specific kind of clothing item that she's going to want to pick out herself. I'm such a good sister. I am like the halfway house for my siblings. <laughs> oh, man. Um, it's just a needed gap, and I've been willing to do that. I don't, it, it can drive me crazy sometimes, but um they just need a place where they can learn to be adults without the um hmm, without parenting getting in the way i'll say that oh look do you see that lighter bit right here? I know what that is. That's fun. But I am excited to not have any siblings with me anymore. Whenever that happens, I don't know when it's going to happen. Probably when I kick them out nicely, tell them it's time to move on <laughs> but i'm not there yet <laughs> i'm okay having him here um because then i have somebody to take care of spiders when they're a problem Did, i need you to not have your bum right here okay excuse you you're in the way I'm sorry for all that shaking. My puppy was bumping. I have to tell you, I'm very relieved that many of you saw something very similarly creepy here that I did. Because then it's not just me who's kind of morbid. I'm not really morbid at all. It's my daughter who is, but I'm glad to, that this is finished and I can know what it is now. <laughs> Happily. Okay, so we have talked about Christmas before, but I'm interested in traditions that you have for like 
maybe the holiday season at large. That's not specifically Christmas, but it could be Christmas. I don't know. Or whatever holiday you celebrate. Good morning, Michelle. Was I going to talk about the horror cat? <laughs> um, you, Alicia, and um, Alara were willing to fess up that you saw the, that as well. Um, <laughs> that's great. So something that I grew up doing that I still do is on the first snowfall of the year, of the season, I guess, um, I make cinnamon rolls or, or something very similar. Some years I've made different versions of cinnamon rolls. And some years I've totally cheated and got it gotten the like can of Pillsbury um but that's something I always look forward to, to doing is making cinnamon rolls for first first snowfall hi Rhonda you finally caught a live yay <laughs> I think I can, like Friday mornings are, are usually, well, it's, it's a Friday morning for me. Um, this time frame works out pretty well for me to go live. It just means you'll always see this piece if I go live at this time. Watergate salad for, okay. I think I know what Watergate salad is. And Emmett's Otter's Jug Band Christmas. Every Christmas Eve, that's fun. Oh, we make cinnamon rolls. I grew up with cinnamon rolls on Christmas morning. I used to be the one to make them. I don't always do that now. It's a lot harder when you have hardly anybody here. And I want to branch out into these other kind of dishes. Like I have a lot of bready cardamom recipe saved that sound really, really good. And I want to give those a try this year. So I might do that instead of cinnamon rolls. We'll see. Okay, so Watergate salad. I think that that... Um, Um, uh, sorry, I have, my siblings are talking, we're having a call tomorrow and we're trying to figure out how we're going to do it. Crushed pineapple, cool whip, pistachio pudding, marshmallows. Okay, yes. So, my daughter just made that, sat the Watergate salad on Sunday when my parents and my older, younger brother was in town, his family. And we usually make a different kind of fruit fluff salad, but I guess she was with her dad and they found that recipe and they're like, we're gonna try that one. So they did, it was so sweet. It was good, but really sweet. There are usually superheroes involved. <laughs> do you um, hand home make the gingerbread, or do you you get like a gingerbread um, kit? Ooh, Alicia, do you ever go to the? conservatory, the Franklin Park Conservatory, and see their, like, gingerbread houses, because it's like a contest competition thing, and they're amazing to look at.
one of the things I miss about that con that um, conservatory. Misses, I'm glad that it's okay if I just stitch this one all the time. <laughs> I was I was setting up this live and I was like, it's the same pattern again. I hope everyone's okay with that. But this is really my life. I stitch on this every day that I'm home. Your son called it yogurt. <laughs> There's like no yogurt in it. He loves it. That's funny. I mean, it's basically dessert, but you can call it dinner. Okay, the conservatory, it's got all the lights and everything. So the lights are really nice too. But yeah, inside. Um, and they always have a, a million poinsettias. It's amazing. I love it going there at Christmas time. I just watched Beauty and the Beast yesterday. You know, Belle gets like three tastes that entire dinner. I hope you have a good appointment, Jerry. Doctors aren't always fun, but they're not always terrible either. <laughs> Knowing me, this will definitely Maybe like three hours. I'm over a hundred stitches though, so there's that. New Year's Eve, I make rice pudding. Um, I'll make rice pudding at other times, but I'll make it like long style instead of like shortcut style for New Year's Eve. That's something that I grew up with as well. Honestly, most of the traditions that I do now come from my childhood, not from like adulthood. And a lot of them are food related because that's my family, the Samoan and Chinese side of my family. It's our DNA coming out. We always made Christmas cookies um during the season and we all the kids got to pick a different cookie and there were seven of us so that's a lot of cookies and then we would make them in mass um and then we'd be caroling and take plates of cookies to whoever my mom had on her list for us to go to There was one family we would go to that always, well, everyone always looked forward to when we would come, but this one um, would have hot chocolate made for us so that we like came inside and had hot chocolate while my parents were chatting.
Alicia's in Ohio, so it's the Ohio Zoo, the Columbus Zoo, which has fantastic lights. Oh, Angie, I did see your post about going to the Santa Claus parade and that you guys didn't freeze. Too bad. Something that this county does, um, the fire department, they go around with their fire truck um, and with Santa Claus and like the I don't know, the top of it, <laughs> whatever that's called. And they just go around to the different neighborhoods and it's fun. It's fun for the kids to, to see the fire truck and to see Santa Claus up there. I haven't been to the DC, DC Zoo either, but I do really want to since I've been to several of the museums up there and they're all fantastic. I don't see why the zoo wouldn't be. The parades here tend to be on Sundays, like midday on Sundays, which are fine, um, but different. I have not been to any of the local parades here. It's not something that Kaylin's ever really been interested in. And I'm not usually one to try to make people like do something they don't want to do. That's an energy drain right there. Columbus is an amazing zoo, though, because of all the work that Jack Hanna put into it. And it's a pretty well-known zoo because of that reason. I think, I think when you live in Ohio and you're just so used to it, you're like, it's just the zoo. But then you go to other zoos and you realize that you're kind of spoiled with the Columbus Zoo. Um, Celia, I adore that tradition in Iceland, and I have done it a few years here. Um, I will usually gift, mm, like Christmas Eve, we'll do a book. But it's mostly like a, I like the idea, and not everybody else does. There's hardly anybody. But I love that tradition. Ooh, a book sale, Christmas market, and light up the Christmas lights around the city. So like everybody just joins in. <laughs> I love that, Angie. I 
like trying to put, pick out books that I think that somebody else is going to read. One thing that my area does, well, the Richmond, Virginia area at large, is they call it tacky lights. And I think you have to have something like 30,000 lights in your yard. And to be on the list, not only do you have to meet that, but you have to agree to have them lit at all times possible. Um, I mean, I know, I know there's certain things like with, with weather related, but otherwise there's like this three week period or something like that, where you agree, like, I'm going to have my lights on from this time to this time. And some, it's really, it's really fun. Most places end up doing like blow ups in their yard and stuff. And so it, it really is quite a mishmatch and and tacky but it's fun they'll put roots together so that you can like go see these eight houses in this area or here's those seven houses over here and it's a lot of fun because you can you get out of your car you sometimes you can't even drive up you have to park and walk because it's so busy with people but you get a walk in not you don't walk in their yard, but you can like go on their driveway and oftentimes up to their porch, depending on what they have decorated. It's a lot of fun. I know there's one house that had like a blow up snow globe that you could go into and then you could take a picture and it, like you were in the snow globe. That was fun. One place accepts any like broken toy or or blow up and then they, they fix them up and use them. It really is fun. <laughs> I know I couldn't do it with the electric bill. Like it, it's so expensive to have them on that long. Okay, something they want, something they need, something to wear, and something to read. I like that. Meanwhile, I'm sitting here like, what one thing is my daughter going to get? I don't know. Hello in South Africa. My grandparents always send their great grandchildren um, gift cards to Barnes and Noble. So I, I often don't end up getting 
any any additional book because I know that I'll take her and and she'll pick out her own with that gift card. Hi, Zan. The best gifts are stuff that gets used all the time or consumables. I like to buy food gifts too. They're like not normal food things. I think one year I got a sibling, like a ginormous gummy bear, like a huge gummy bear. I also got them a game, so it's the gummy bear was not the only thing. I have liked to get a game every year and I've done that for maybe three years now. And I haven't decided what I want to get for this year. If I had thought about it, I would have kept the wingspan back because we haven't played it yet. But she already knows that I got that, so I can't wrap it up now. <laughs> Board game. I like, I like getting a board game of some kind. I, I like building up, or a card game. Yesterday we played one called Relative Insanity, which was like apples to apples, but like hurt my soul because it was so mean. It was like, how do we burn family members? It was, I didn't like it. <laughs> wants old newspapers so we can start as charcoal girlies <laughs> newspapers are hard to come by now charter stone i don't i've heard of mysterium but not charter stone wait i need i need to keep a list Um, where's my Christmas idea list? Here it is. I have a mortar and pestle on my Christmas list. I really hope my daughter's not listening right now. Charter stone. Mysterium. And she's got newspaper and games. <laughs> okay, I I do have one of those story story games. Ant Legend of Andor. I don't remember. Haven't finished it yet. But I have played them before. Every year, you also wrap an onion or coal as a gift for one of the uncles who are naughty. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Wax of Quedlinburg? Wax, another one that I haven't heard of. I really like puzzles, but nobody else likes to do puzzles with me. Or at all. So I think that's what started 
me getting games instead because at least somebody would do it with me instead. It's just that I don't always do well with games. But he asked for the coal. Alicia, you should individually wrap each of the coal items. Oh, you could wrap it in newspaper, so he's getting double dose. That would not be messy at all to do that. Super fun family weight game style is push your luck drawing tokens for your first luck. Oh man, push your luck. I don't know if I could do that. That's so stressful to me. It depends on who I'm playing with. I could probably handle it if the atmosphere was right. Oh, outside games would be fun. Oh, I I really want a slack line. Does that count as a game? Not really, but I do really want a slack line. I'd probably be, I don't know that Kaylin would enjoy it at all, but I would. I've heard of Robinson Crusoe. Works well for you in chat. <laughs> And Robinson Crusoe is a big box. I love co-op games, especially the ones that are well done um, to where they still feel like a game. <laughs> Zan loves puzzles, but don't allow anyone to touch my puzzles. I am very, I'm a little protective of my puzzles too. What, what I mostly get annoyed at are the people who come around when you're down to like the last five pieces and they're like, I'm going to put a piece in and, oh, look, I helped with the puzzle. It's like, no, you didn't. <laughs> you did not help with that puzzle. <laughs> I would fit in great with the slack line. Yes. I think they're super fun. Marvel Legendary. I've seen that one. I haven't played that one. Hi, Suzanne. In the Netherlands. Yeah, Angie, no, that, that does not, I don't like doing, I don't like people who do that. Like, especially the last piece, like, why should you get that satisfaction when you did nothing? <laughs> Hi, Jessica. Um, yeah, Pandemic. I see that one around a lot. That's a, I've heard that's a good co-op game. We have, I have one that's like, I th this, this had to have been last year's game. It's a bakery one and it's kind of like one of those story, it's not story based, it's scenario based. And so how you set up or like the objectives you're trying to reach change 
each time you play it. That those ones are fun, those kind of co-op games. So one thing with puzzles, this happened years and years ago. Um, <laughs> I would, I don't do this anymore because they're all much older now, but with my younger siblings, I would um, like, if they found themselves somewhere without a way to pay, I would pay for them, but then they would have a tab with me that they would then pay off. And they always did, sometimes more eventually than another. And I had this one brother who, I, <laughs> the brother who lives with me currently, actually, um, he had like quite a tab sitting there waiting to pay off. And so we were on a va family vacation once with a puzzle there. And um, I wanted to make sure that the puzzle got finished before the vacation was over. And so I offered to him that every puzzle piece that he put in, I would take off $1 off his tab. All my other siblings who like, didn't get that offer because they didn't have tabs open with me at that moment. They were like, you need to do it. Take it. Like, that's so, like, why wouldn't you take that? He did nothing. He did not do one puzzle piece whatsoever. It was just very funny because my siblings were like, she doesn't ever offer something like that. You need to do it. And he did nothing. He didn't even do one piece. <laughs> he wasn't, he's not a fan of puzzles. That's not how his brain works at all. Celia, your cats. <laughs> you just pay the bill. They live, they live there. I have like a puzzle, um, like a way to close it up when I'm not working on it so that my cats can't come and sit on it. Because that's really what they do. They sit on it and then when they jump off, like the pieces stick to their feet. Okay, you're like naming all of these games that I've never heard of. Architects of the West Kingdom, Raiders of the North Sea, Lords of Waterdeep. I need to write all of these down. I like Catan. I like their expansion packs too. I don't think I have any of these. I think I only have their basic game though. Raiders of the North Sea, Lords of Water Deep. They were using the pieces as hockey pucks. <laughs> <laughs> My cats never did that, but now they're 14. They're they're too old to want to do that. Trial by trolley. I'm just keeping a keeping a big list here of everything that you guys. I've not ever played Cards Against Humanity. So I think I'm wary of games, which is why I, I haven't played a lot of commonly known games. I don't think it's the games themselves I'm wary as much as the environment surrounding playing them that I'm wary of. 
So I'm trying to do better. And like version of apples to apples. Why is my connection unstable again? Let's see. I just played relative insanity last night. That one is like, it's like apples to apples, but like in, I don't know what to call them. To me, they feel like insults, but they're probably minor. <laughs> Alicia, I'm glad it's not just me who haven't heard of them. Part of it's probably because we're all over the country, all over the world. And, and so we have all of these different, like, games that are going to be around. You have almost 200 games. I kind of love that. Flatline, I don't mind chaotic. I mean, like, I really like games like Pit, which is, you know, lots of yelling and craziness. It's never calm. That game's never fun or calm. It's always fun. The more people, the better. Yeah, I I love the ones that are less mass market. I think I, I'm really informal with my homeschooling and I find myself drawn to um, things, mentalities kind of like game schooling where you um, play games a lot to learn. Uh, not necessarily that you play educational games. They can be educational, but... Um, The problem is that I, I have one child, and so games isn't always something that you can easily do with just, like, the two people, me and her. And I haven't been very good about involving other people. Complicated strategic games that make you want to tear how, hair out in a fun way. Um, I have to be in the right mental space to like that. There, I like, here's what I like. I like reading um, the rule book and and I like pulling out all of those rules that people don't like to play with. So sometimes, depending on the mood of people, they either give me the rule book or they, they keep it far away from me. Oh, Spoons is fun too. Okay, yeah. Playing games that... And, and it's fun to learn those. It becomes very natural to do that. Sherlock Holmes. I think I wrote that one down. We have Dutch Blitz. That one's a pretty new game to us. It is fun. Sherlock Holmes. You recently played Skip Bow, and Kaylin said, it's basically Dutch Blitz, but calmer because you take turns. <laughs> you're, not, you're not wrong about that. 
I like phase 10 too. Some games have really mean take that cards in the way I don't like. Yeah. I like the Flux games too. They're all just a little bit different. I have two of those ones. I like those. Mad Uno. Um, is that like a specific version of Uno or just like you tweak the rules of Uno? Because I have played versions of Uno where you just tweak the rules. I'm not sure that. I can't remember what we called it, though. We also have dose. <laughs> I've never played the dice version of phase 10. I've modified games like that, um, where you just end up showing everything instead. There's, or like sometimes you just need to tweak the rules. Just personalization, I feel like that's okay. As long as everyone knows what's going on and is in agreement. Okay, yes, I have played that version of Uno, Alicia. Um, I just, I don't um, remember all the rules. And I feel like we called it something different. But I can't think of it now, I'd have to ask my siblings. They would remember. Just playing with your eight-year-old every time it's his turn. <laughs> that would drive me crazy. King of Tokyo. Yeah, this is a quite long list for me to look at. Maybe all the presents this year are going to be games, because with this list, that's kind of what it's going to need to be. And then I need to, like, have people to play with. There are, there's so many good games and I clearly don't know enough of them. In Utah, um, 